this video, we're going to be covering an example of how you would use a laser, a plasma, or a water jet inside of the Bobcad Cam software. Now, these are all very simple tool paths. You're really only going to use one type of tool path. It's a profile finish. You just have to make sure you have the right machine and post processor set up so you get all the options specific to the machine. So the way this one's going to work is we have our geometry laid out. We're going to go up to the new job by right clicking on cam defaults and just say a new job. Now we're going to keep it on milling, but we're going to change the machine. So we have a BC3X laser. We have a BC3X plasma. We have a BC3X water jet. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the laser here. And then I'm going to go ahead and go right into the stock wizard. Now, I don't have a solid model on my screen currently, so there's nothing for me to pick for my workpiece. So I'm just going to hit the next arrow into the stock wizard. And now for this one, it's just created a piece of stock around the entire part that I'm just going to set up as 48 by 48. And then to make sure everything's situated properly so that I could use this bottom left-hand corner for my origin, I just want to make sure that down here we have our X and Y set to 24 by 24. That way it's perfectly centered right there in that bottom left hand corner is now sitting right at the origin. And then up here, I'm just going to set my Z as 0.125. So we'll go with an eighth inch thick piece of material. Now we're going to just hit that next arrow one time. The origin's automatically going to get picked up right there because that's kind of how I situated it. I wanted that bottom corner right there. And then we have our work offset and our work offset for X, Y, Z. Otherwise, we don't actually have to pick anything. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. Now, after we have the stock created, we don't really have to worry about a tool crib through this one because there isn't really a tool crib. It's a laser size. It's a diameter of a laser. So all we're going to do is right click and go down to our mill two axis. Now, we're going to go and pick our geometry. So we're going to say select geometry. I'm going to drag a box over the whole part and then I'm going to set my depth to an eighth of an inch. Now, you really don't need to because the way we're setting this up is it's meant to go all the way through. So we're going to set the power settings and everything depending on where we put that. We want it to go all the way through the part. So now I'll go ahead and hit OK. And then I'll hit Next. Right here is all our parts. We have our eighth inch depth and we're not going to add any extensions on. And then right here we have our machining strategy. The only strategy I need to use for my laser, my plasma, or my water jet is going to be this profile finish. So I can actually click on the profile rough and then hit this red X right here to delete it. And the reason we're keeping just the finish instead of the rough, the rough pass has a couple settings that are made as a roughing pass. So it has allowance being left on the part by default. And there's just a few weird settings in there that if we use the profile finish, we don't have to worry about. Next, we then set up our tabs. Now, if we wanted to leave tabs on this part, you could go in and actually leave a tab on the part, or you could just draw an area when you're drawing your parts, just leave an area out, trim a little section out, and it'll kill the laser or the plasma or the water jet, move across, and it'll kick back on. In this case, though, I'm just going to leave it and hit next, no tabs. Right here's our posting, so we have work offset one. Down here, we have whether or not we use lines or arcs, and then say next. Right here we have our laser tool. So this is all we're setting up is the diameter of that laser right there. Right here you're going to set up the gas type. So you got air, oxygen, or oxyacetylene. And then you have your tool label and there is no holder label. Down here we tell it whether the cutter is on or off, whether the gas is on or off, and whether the shutter is open or closed. Now the plasma and the water jet will have specific settings to those machines as well. So they'll still ask for the diameter, but they might have a couple extra options or different options right down here. Over here is our feeds and speeds. And this is where we would actually go in and manually enter what we want to run at. So I could say I want to run at 50 inches per minute. I want my pierced well to be, it's an eighth inch, so I'll say a half a second. The pulse frequency, the power setting, and the torch height control, this is really going to depend on what your machine wants to read. And some of these machines don't even use this G code in here. We don't even have to set it. It depends on the machine. But a lot of the times with the lasers, plasmas, and water jets, you're setting your feed rates at the machine. So first determine where you need to set them. If you need them in the G code, this is where you're going to do it. If you just enter them at the machine, you could pretty well just ignore this right here. Next, we then have our pattern. So this is a basic profile finish. There's nothing different than 
the earlier video, if you watch the mill tutorial, we did a little profile finish in there as well. But in this case, we just have our standard cut. We tell it which way to compensate. I'm gonna go ahead and change it down here under my compensation. I'm gonna set it to right. And the reason is I don't have to worry about a rotational force here. So I don't have to worry about a climb or a conventional mill so much. One of the things that'll always happen when you're selecting geometry and you just hit compute is it likes to pick the geometry as the wrong direction. Not really the wrong direction, but it sets it as counterclockwise. And so normally if we leave it on left, that would put us on the inside of the part, or we could just put it on the right and it'll put us on the outside of the part. The other way to use a left compensation would be to leave it on left, compute the tool path, you'll see everything come out backwards, and then you flip the start point directions on everything. So I'll show you how to do that in a second when we get there. So right here we have our system compensation to the right, and then we'll go next. Right here's our parameters, so it's a finish pass, cutting it to size, so zero, zero, and a single step. Right here we have our leads, and so for the leads on this one, I don't need to go anything too crazy. The laser's only 10th out, but I also gotta factor in any sort of overburn that might happen, especially on a plasma, that might overcut. So I wanna go in and use a right angle lead, and I'm just gonna set the size to 0.1, and then I'll hit next. Right here's our corner types. We're not making any changes there. We'll hit next again. We have our machine sequencing, so it's just the order that we cut everything in. And I like to use optimize. Optimize looks at the best possible option from closest, no sorting, X direction, and Y direction. Custom direction lets me set a custom angle. So it doesn't use that because there's many possibilities for different angles. But if we leave it on optimized, we now have a nice cut that's gonna kind of plan itself out really good. Next, we then have our advanced feed rates. And so we're not gonna make any changes here. We're done and we can hit compute. And so if we zoom in, we'll see all the tool path to the outside of the part. Now, just to show what happens if you normally set this up, if you go to your patterns and you set this back to left, and then you hit compute, it's going to put the tool paths on the inside of the part. So there's a time and a place for both situations. There might be a time I want to leave the inside cut out, and I want to leave the outside kind of shell around here. So to fix an issue like this, if I want to cut the outside of the part, even with a left compensation, I just need to go and modify all of these start points. And it's a very easy thing to do. You go over to default chain start point under the feature two axis, you right click, and then you'll say reverse direction, and then compute the tool path. It's going to pop it back out to the outside. Now the right way to do this, or the way that I like to do it, is I'm gonna reverse this back to what we'll say is the wrong direction for left. But it was a good direction when we had the pattern set to the right. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna edit this, and I'm gonna to go to the patterns page and set it to right, and then hit compute. And that puts me on the outside, leaves me on the outside, which is what I saw before. But now it's gonna come out to the outside every time I use this tool path. And why that's important is because after you do one job with this, depending on how often you change materials and depending on how you set up your feeds, if you're lucky enough to set all your feed rates out at your machine, then the path is always going to be the same. It's the pierced wells and all the other options that'll change out at the machine. And so if that's the case, if you're able to program the feed rates, the feeds and speeds at the machine, you can save this feature. So you can actually right click in here. And so you could go down say save feature. And I'm gonna put it in my V32 features folder, which is where it links to automatically. And I'm just gonna call this laser profile. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now the best part about this is if we wanted to start from scratch. So if I came in and I deleted this entire milling job, we just went through all that work, we set it all up. Now I'm gonna restart it. But now it's gonna go a lot faster because instead of having to go in and set up all the geometry and do the entire tool path over again, all we have to do is pick geometry and hit compute. So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna choose my laser again, and I'm gonna go make my stock wizard. So again, I don't have a workpiece, so I'll ignore the selected geometry for the workpiece. I'll go ahead and set my size up for 48 by 48 by an eighth of an inch. And remember the Z depth really doesn't matter too much just because you're always gonna be changing your pierce dwells and all that kind of stuff if you're out at the machine. That's what's gonna control really the thickness of the material. And then right here, we're gonna go 24 
by 24. Go next, set up the origin right at that bottom left hand corner, and then hit OK. So now that we have the stock done, that's really as far as you need to get back to, because now to do the tool pathing, I just right click on machine setup. I say load feature, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick that laser profile. And then it'll ask you, do you wish to use the same top of feature and depth? Yes, I do. But even if I didn't, when I go to pick my geometry, so I could right click here, say reselect, I could change the depth right down here and I could change the top, which you really shouldn't be changing the top for your laser. And you really don't need to mess with the depth depending on how you're doing it. But if you plan on simulating and you want to see the part get cut out, make sure to set the depth to the thickness of the part or a little bit more if you want. That way in the simulation, it fully pokes through because the laser isn't infinite in the simulation. It just goes to whatever depth you tell it. So all I'm going to do now is pick my geometry, just drag a box over the whole thing. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to right click on that feature two axis right here and say compute all toolpath. And now if we zoom in and we take a look, all our toolpaths are on the outside of the part all the way around. So I don't have to mess with it every single time. I just have to make the toolpath really one time. You might have a couple different toolpaths that you save, especially if your machine is the one that wants the feed rates in the G code. If that's the case, then make sure to set them in here, but you can save more than one. So if you have different thicknesses of materials with different size feeds and speeds, just save multiple features, one for an eighth inch, one for a quarter, one for 10 gauge, whatever you got to do, just set them up so you can quickly add them to your library and then kind of pull them in. That feature is kind of like the tool library for this one. You really don't have to mess with too much. You just have to load the features, pick the geometry, and hit compute. And that concludes the video on the laser, plasma, and water jet example from inside the version 32.